If you ever needed to be in an, an assisted living or if someone you love need to be in an assisted living, would you know what to look for? What would you, what do you want? What do you need? There's so many options out there. And that's what we're going to talk about today. What you should look for if you or someone you love need to wind up living in an assisted living. So if you want to know more about that, please just stay tuned. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Scan FYI. Yeah, you know, today we're going to talk about uh, what you need to look for if you need to be in an assisted living or if someone you love needs to be in assisted living. We have the perfect person today who can give us all the information we need. That is the one and only Tony Cologne from Bartley Healthcare and Orchard. So, Tony, hello. Good morning. Hi, Andrea. How are you? Thank you for having me here today. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Tony. You know what? Why don't you just explain briefly what your role is at Bartley and Orchards? Just give a little brief description, then we'll just get right into it. Sure. I'm a nurse by trade, and uh, my position is pretty unique. I'm a, the community outreach director. So my job is to educate seniors, educate doctors, educate hospitals on our capabilities and what we can do. And uh, part of that is assisted living. We have an assisted living on our campus in Jackson. It's called the Orchards uh, Assisted Living, and it's a very unique assisted living. Um, but there's lots of things that, you know, go into looking for when you're shopping around for an assisted living and why you would be looking for. That's what we're here to talk about today. Right. And of course, as always, we will put all of Tony's contact information in the description. So if anyone, uh, by the way, Tony is an excellent resource on just about anything. If he doesn't know the answer, he will get you the answer. So I think I want to say, feel free to give him a call. He can, he's the man. Yeah. So, absolutely. you know what, Tony, first of all, what, why would you need to live in an assisted living facility? Sure. So there's times you know, everybody's goal is to stay home, especially as we age in place. Yeah. You know, we want to stay home. We want to stay in our home that we lived in for years and years and years. And it's just the way we want it. But sometimes that's not reasonable, especially if someone is home living on their own and they're slowing down and maybe they need some kind of assistance. Maybe there's some home care involved. Maybe the neighbor's coming to help, you know, a couple times a week or something like that. You know, if it gets to the point where that person at home isn't able to do all their, their daily activities, you know, like getting washed up, getting dressed, going shopping, going to the doctor's office and stuff. It might be a good time to look for an assisted living. And I know a lot of people, especially when I'm talking to seniors about assisted living and the pricing and stuff, they're like, oh, it's so much money. But you have to take into consideration a few things. You're living at home, you're paying rent, you're paying gas, electric, cable, taxes, all the bills associated yeah. with the home. And now when you're involving home care into the into the mix, and if you if they're there for like one or two hours, a couple times a week, it probably isn't going to make a huge impact. But if you're looking, I have them there half a day, you know, that's going to be a significant cost, you know, and uh, a lot of seniors that I know, they have limited income or limited means and, you know, they have their savings and all that. And they're going to burn through it very quickly if they're doing, you know, full time uh, a home care and whatnot. So, you know, sometimes it makes sense to look at an assisted living because the assisted livings can be uh, a less expensive option in most cases. Well, because you're, you're taking everything that it would cost you to be in your home exactly. and you're just moving that, that financial consideration to something, to something else. Exactly. But it, is it fair to say that, well, in an assisted living situation, you know, um, I guess, first of all, what, what is the kinds of assistance that people are getting? And of course there's levels too. Not everyone goes to an assisted living needing a hundred percent care. You might exactly. just need help with laundry, just for example. Sure. Yeah. And assisted living is exactly as the name implies, you know, you're living your life on your terms and there is assistance there for you. So most assisted livings, they have laundry services, housekeeping services, they have care, they have uh, aides, like either nurses aides or certified nurses aides or home health aides, they're working in the building and some some sort of nursing support, um, which is important. You know, a lot of seniors are on medications, maybe they have high blood pressure, maybe, uh, 
you know, they have a, some kind of Alzheimer's or dementia or something like that. And that nursing oversight becomes important. Um, nursing is not required 24 seven. And that's the main difference between long-term care and assisted living is that, you know, there's usually isn't us nurses in house in the middle of the night. They usually have some kind of like home health or med techs in the building. Um, but you know, if they need 24 seven nursing supervision, then that's where that long-term care, uh, talk comes into place. But yeah, so there, there's lots of staff there. Um, I know in the orchards, our pricing is a little bit different. We're all inclusive and that includes the housekeeping staff, the laundry staff, that includes uh, dining services. So you don't have to cook. Most assisted livings there, they don't, you know, the, the residents don't have to cook. They go down they have their meal kind of like a restaurant style. Right. Um, and then the care is the most important aspect. Like I said, most places will offer some kind of medication management where the nursing is looking over the medications. And then that care component, you know, if the person needs help with their putting on clothes or shoes or showering or something like that, that assistance is there. Um, but Tony, if you're if you're really it, uh, you're living independently. So, yeah. for example, if you if you want to go off with your friends and see a movie, it's not like you have to check in with some. You're you're you you do your thing, right? You you can yeah yeah. You live life on your terms. Uh, there's a lot of places that you know, as long as you're safe to drive, you can keep your car there. Well, yes, yes. Come and go. <laughs> you know, some places will offer bus trips. You know, they have like uh, transportation services and they can drop you off wherever you want to go. So if you want to go to the movies and meet maybe a friend that lives out in the community, you can do that. You know, they'll drop you off and they'll come back and pick you up in a couple hours later. Now, you mentioned that uh, most folks in, in, in an assisted living situation have their meals like restaurant style in, in, a, in a big dining room. But what if you want to cook? What if you want to make a cup of tea or you want to make a little dinner for yourself? Do you have that option? Yeah, so sure. sure. So some of the assisted livings, they offer like a kitchenette area or a small kitchen in a lot of these places that you have your own apartment. I know in the orchards we offer a studio apartment and a one bedroom apartment. Every apartment comes with its own kitchenette area. So okay. you can okay. have a coffee maker, you have a microwave, a fridge and things like that. In the orchards, we ha actually have a couple cooking cooking areas. So like if uh, if the residents want to do like a cooking kind of social, they're able to do that, you know, and activities will help them with that. So you're 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 living independently, but care is there as you need it. So like if you if you don't need much, that's one thing. But mm -hmm. if you as you're as you're aging in place in an assisted living, additional care is there if you need it, correct? Yeah. Yes. And and that is probably like one of the biggest factors uh when you're shopping around for an assisted living is, you know, some places like the orchards are all inclusive. That means you pay for your apartment and everything is included, the care, everything. So if you need a little bit or need a lot, it doesn't really make a difference. Okay. Most assisted living though, they're a la carte. So if you don't need any help in the beginning, got it. Paying for your room and whatever fees are associated with that. And as your care needs increase in the future, that monthly fee is going to increase. So that's something very important that seniors want to look at. You know, if you're looking into assisted living, this is a, if it's a if it's an option for you, you know, I would uh, find out what all those fees are because the you know if you don't need a lot of help in the beginning, it's not going to amount to much. But as you need more assistance, you know, if you need one person assistance, meaning you aren't physically able to get out of the bed or out of the chair on your own, you need help. They're going to, that's going to cost you significantly. If you need two people, you know, maybe, you know, there's a lot of people that are, you know, myself included are a little overweight. You yeah. might need two people to get out of the bed or out of the chair. And that's going to cost, you know, whereas the orchards is all inclusive, you know, so whether you need one person or two people to get out of that chair, it's cost the same, you know, and another assisted living, they might charge you a few thousand dollars a month for that service you know, depending. So I guess one of the things that's going to be very important as you're out and about and making a decision about where would be the right assisted living is understanding that some places like the orchard would be inclusive mm -hmm. and some you're going to have an a la carte situation. Yeah. So I didn't know that. So you see, that's, that's very, that's an important thing to know. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, like I tell most seniors and most people, you know, when, you know, you would drive a little bit further to get a good deal if you were going shopping 
sometimes it makes sense to drive a little bit further to get that care, you know, because maybe the assisted living near you isn't set up for exactly what you want it to be. Maybe it's a little too expensive. You know, maybe coming to Jackson might make sense. You know, I get people that have moved from New York all the way to Jackson because the cost difference is is astronomical. You know, it's right. amazing. And the care is there, the staff there, you know, it's it's lovely, it's home like, you know, and not all places are like that. Some places uh, you know, kind of has like a hotel feeling, you know, like and it's nice to look at. It's nice to go to a hotel when you go away, but maybe that's not necessarily what you're looking for when you want to live someplace. You know, you want a more home like environment. Our place is homey, you know. So sometimes it's worth taking a little bit of a ride outside of your area and checking out other places. You know, right. after all, you're going to downsize a little bit. You're going to move into a new place. So it doesn't really matter if you're close to where you used to live or you're a little further away. You know, it needs to make sense to whoever's shopping around for that assisted living. So sometimes it's worth taking a little ride. So one of the things we always talk about at SCAN is the idea of, you know, being prepared for the future because you, you just never know. Yeah. And part of that preparation, if if there's any clue in your life that you or a loved one is going to need to live in an assisted living, maybe not right now, maybe a year or two from now, it seems like it would be a good idea to explore the options within your community and to, like you said, go outside your community. So when the time comes, you you can say, uh, okay, this is where I'd like to go. Not, you know, we, we never want to make a decision in the panic mode. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm sure I'm sure orchards and other places allow for uh, a visit so that you can see for yourself. Can't just look at a brochure and say, yeah, this Absolutely. is the place. Right. You got to yeah. go there. Yeah. Most places you're able to call up and schedule a tour. Some places do tours on the spot. I usually tell people to schedule it just because you want to talk to the right people the first time you want to all the pricing information you want, all your questions answered. And if you drop by on a Sunday, you might get the tour, you get to look at it, but you might leave with a bunch of questions and you'll have to come back again. Um, so usually I recommend people call for a tour and set up a tour. Most um, admissions directors and marketers, they're willing to come in on like a weekend or something to mm -hmm. be flexible to show you around. I know at the Orchards, we do lots of different things. So the Orchards has, uh, we have a movie theater on site. So a lot of times what we'll do is if there's a group of seniors that are interested in coming to look at the orchards, we can set up like a movie day. They can come check out the movie, uh, watch a movie. They can have free snacks. We'll take them for a tour and answer all their questions. And this is like the least amount of pressure ever. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want to give yeah. you information. So I'll show them around. And one day if they're ready and they want to move in, that's great. You know, so, uh, we do that pretty often where we hook up with like some of the senior centers and we'll do like a movie day at the orchards so they can come, they check out a movie. It's a nice time for them and they can ask all the questions that they have because they have a lot of questions. And sometimes people, you know, they get embarrassed calling to ask prices or ask those questions. You know, they can ask it there. We'll answer them. And it's, it's, it's like a no pressure situation, you know. So Tony, a lot of what are what are some of the questions that that people wind up having? I mean, other than pricing information, um, I mean that because that's that's specific, you know, for for each person differently. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I think about well, you know, how's the food? Is there parking? What are some common things that people would ask if they're going to an assisted living, or what should they be asking? Sure. So the first thing is, like I mentioned earlier, you want to set up a tour. You want to go see the place. You want to see, they're going to show you a model room. Our model room is gorgeous. And you want to see an empty room. You want to see what it looks like when without anything in there. And The models see, are always gorgeous. Of course they exactly. are. Exactly. And you want to see that the empty room is kind of looking kind of the same. So you want to make sure it has like the same color schemes or, you know, if you have an option to get a new carpet or flooring, you know, that, you know, you can discuss that ahead of time. Uh, you want to see what their staffing is like, how many people they have on during the day, how many people there is on in the middle of the night? You know, some people don't think about that. You're sleeping. Maybe at nighttime, you might need a little something, uh, maybe like a Tylenol or something. Maybe you wake up a little sore or something. You want a Motrin. You know, you want to make sure somebody's going to be there in the middle of the night to give you that Motrin. Some places don't have any med techs on in the middle of the night. So if you're having a little bit of pain or you need some kind of medication in the middle of the night, those places aren't able to do that. Um, 
you know, so you want to make sure that there's med techs or nurse there 24 seven. Uh, you want to make sure that they have a good, um, list of doctors that come into the facility. So you're moving into this assisted living, the doctors can come see you now. You don't have to go out for every single appointment. You know, you want your primary in-house. They're going to be- Doctor, looking, they're, they're going to come to you there? Yeah, oh, all right. Good to know. So most places have doctors on site. You know, they don't come every day, but they're there and they come, they they do house calls when someone's sick or somebody's not feeling well. They could order like labs and x-rays and stuff like that. It's a little slower than the hospital, but it happens. You know, you can get that done there. You don't have to go somewhere to do it. So, I mean, looking for in-house physician uh, to support you is important. Um, I would, when you're on your tour, take note, make sure it's clean. You know, some places are super clean and well-maintained. Some places aren't, you know, I'm not saying there's not a lot of them out there. I've been to a lot of assisted living. Most of them are pretty well-maintained, but you know, that's something you want to look at. You want to make sure that it's cleanly. You can go on Google. Usually you can see what other people think you know, uh, of a place on Google by looking at their Google stars. Like check um, the reviews and see what other exactly. people Exactly, you can see say. what yeah. people are, if there's any complaints or if people are complimentary, you know, and, you know, some of them are subjective, you know, but um, they are kind of get a, a general feel of the theme, you know, if there's a bunch of people on the complaint and it's dirty, chances of the place is dirty. You know, if there's a lot of people that are saying the place is wonderful and the food is great, you know, chances are the food is wonderful and great. A lot of these places they offer, um, they're not uh, restricted by dietary issues. So they cook and they put the seasoning in. So the food is usually pretty good in most of these assisted livings. I know in the orchard, so Bartley and the orchard is on the same campus. And when sometimes we get people on the rehab side that move into the orchards and they're like, why is the food so much better? It's because there isn't any dietary restrictions. It doesn't oh, have to... all right. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah that makes so sense. We, right. <laughs> they put seasoning in it. They put salt in it. You know, on the system, on the rehab side, you can't put salt. You can't put seasoning in food because all these people, they have different dietary needs. On the assisted living side, they can have anything. They're, they're responsible for monitoring their own diet. So they'll put seasoning in it. You know, they can order seconds if they want. They can order ice cream if they want. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, I I I want to say I th I think one misconception about assisted living that I hear from people is that it 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 is independent living. You're you know you're you're not in a hospital, you're not in a rehab, you're not in a nursing. You're 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 living in your own apartment, but yes. it's just that care is there if if you need it. But you're coming and going and eating what you want, you know, you know, mom is not there monitoring your salt intake, you know, you, you gotta be a self-manager, right? You're, yeah. you're living yeah, on yeah. your own. A lot of it is, you know, you're managing on your own. Um, yeah. You might not be like get taking your meds yourself, you know, where like in, at home you would set up your medications and pour it yourself. We call it pour, you know, you, you would pour the medication yourself. You go to the wellness director or the wellness office and, they'll give you your medicine, you know, they'll take it out for you and they hand it to you and you take it, you know, which is nice that way you don't forget what pills you're on. You don't have to worry about reordering the medication or picking it up from the pharmacy. It's there. You don't have to worry about that. They'll check your blood pressure and your blood sugars if you need it. Yeah. Um, all places do that. Some places do, some places don't. It depends. Um, so that's another thing, you know, if you're on specialty medications, if you're on blood sugar, if you need blood sugars, like for diabetes, or any kind of like respiratory medicines or anything like that, you want to make sure like that support is there. So that, that would be another important question to ask. So the bottom line is ask questions, mm -hmm. go for a visit, check things out. Always check things out before you need it. Always. Always. Because you never want to make a decision in panic mode or in emergency mode, whether it's for you or someone else. And yeah. again, all of all of Tony's info, it, you know, is in the description. And I really encourage you to give him a call, make an appointment, ask your questions. You're not under any obligation. He's not a realtor. He's not making commission. Nope. <laughs> I get paid by the company, so I don't he's, make commission. Um, he's, th he's there for you. He's, de he's yeah. definitely there for you. Well, Tony, thank you mu so much for being with me today. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome, Andrea. Thank you for having me. Okay, always a pleasure to talk to you. All right, remember out there, if it's important to you, it's important to us. I'm Andrea Tarr. We'll see you next time on Scan FYI. Bye, everyone, and bye, bye Tony. Take care.